And the second Bournemouth Writing Festival is taking place from the 26th of April uh, right through to Sunday the 28th. Its director is Dominic Wong, and he's my very special guest. And Dominic, before I talk specifically about the festival, tell me about you. Have, have you uh, were you born with a pen in your hand? I wasn't, but like most people that I meet, used to love writing when they was at school, and then once you leave school and work gets in the way and family and other things that you kind of forget about writing. Um, and I think for a lot of people, lockdown gave us the opportunity to have a bit more time and a bit of kind of creative freedom, I suppose, to start putting pen to paper again and, um, and getting those words down. So did you find your creative self during COVID? I did, actually, yes. Um, I started to write my first book during COVID and then uh, and self-published that. And then during COVID, I volunteered at the food bank. And um, that's where my insp the inspiration for my second book So your came. first book, tell us about it. What was it about? What's the subject? It's, um, it's a romantic thriller that tells both sides of the story. So it's called The Opposite Sides of a Coin. So the first half of the story tells the point of view from the female character, and then the second part of the story tells the same story, but from the point of view of the male ca character. So as you can imagine, there's a few twists as you go along. Of course, the wonderful thing about writing is you're, you're letting your imagination go wild, whether you're the writer or indeed you're the reader, aren't you? Uh, and I guess, uh, have you always been an imaginative type person? Well, yeah, my, my full-time job actually is in marketing. So I have to be very creative in that. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always loved um, films and books that have got twists in, so uh, that's where I start. So in, in my writing, I always end, uh, start with the end and then work my way towards that, that all-important twist. I mean, they do say that there's a book in every single one of us, don't they? And, but I, I guess that the problem is having confidence in order to, to, to just take the step and, and write. It doesn't really matter whether other people like, like it or not, as long as you, you express yourself. I, I, that is my message to everybody that joins the Bournemouth Writing Festival, actually. And, and the, the kind of message is that, you know, well, the Bournemouth Writing Festival inspires writers to write. It doesn't matter if you're a complete beginner or if you've already published a few or, you know, what we want to do is just get your story out or we want to hear your voice and the writing festival has over 100 talks and workshops to do just that and the number of people that i meet who said i i want to write but i don't have the confidence or i just don't know how to that is so common in the huge number of people that i talk to and the writing festival it's not just the writing festival we have um, events all throughout the year like we have networking events and you wouldn't believe the number of people that come to the networking events and to the writing festival that haven't even started writing yet <laughs> <laughs> so my two colleagues here can take hope and inspiration can't they absolutely uh, uh, now obviously this is the second festival the first one was, was a great success. Tell us how it went. Well, it blew my mind, really. I was expecting it to be a very local event, um, but actually 26% of the people that came to the first writing festival lived outside Dorset. We had people all the way from Gateshead, from North Wales, and even somebody from Albania flew over. So, um, and this year is going to be even bigger and even better. And we already have people booked in from Glasgow and, again, Wales and, you know, all over the country. So it's, it just blew my mind, really. And, and the amount of different types of people that came you know we had young people we had old people we had people from all sorts of different backgrounds and diversity it was just such a beautiful inclusive and diverse festival for Bournemouth and it was just lovely to see now I know a lot of people aren't bothered about having their works published but but again a lot of people are I've had a number of people on the program who have written stuff particularly poetry actually and they've said to me how do I get this published now as somebody who is self-published what tips can you give them um well i think right from the beginning um as to what you said is right for the joy of it right for the passion and don't worry so much about getting published yes that's the kind of goal that a lot of people strive towards but in my view write for yourself and then if if other people like it or if you feel like you should publish it then you should definitely go ahead now there's several different routes you can go to to get your work out there um, number one is try to find a, an agent <laughs> a traditional publisher and we actually have five literary agents coming down from London to the uh, Bournemouth Writing Festival so a very festival. good reason why they should go on to the festival <laughs> absolutely but unfortunately all five of those literary agents are sold out now so they were a little bit too late oh but dear <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they do have a, uh, two of them are doing a tour um, on the Saturday morning at 10 o'clock so and um, you can go to that talk and get some tips and uh, advice from them um, uh, and then self-publishing uh, is another and it's so easy to uh, do. The uh, second Bournemouth Writing Festival is taking place from uh, Friday 
the 26th of April right through until the 28th of April, the, the Sunday. And the festival director, Dominic Wong, is my very special guest today, and he's inspiring me, never mind, never mind you. Now, when you come to, it's almost like baking a cake, isn't it? The ingredients that go into making a very successful festival. I heard that you had 600 attended the first festival, not a small number. Uh, are you hoping for even bigger numbers this time around? My goodness, yes. Um, you know, the buzz and the uh, number of tickets we've sold already for mm -hmm. this year, as I said, five, uh, no, six events have already sold out um, is just incredible. So uh, it's it's in venues across the Bournemouth Town Centre. So the main festival hub is in the Pavilion Dance, but we're also going to be in the Avenue where the Poetry Hub's going to be. We're going to be in Bobby's. We're going to be on the beach. So we've got beach walking, uh, <laughs> writing on the beach activities. As I said, we're in the bandstand. And also we have um, networking events in cafes and restaurants across the Town Centre. So the whole purpose of the festival is not just to inspire writers to write, but it's also to help Bournemouth um, to... Uh, to showcase Bournemouth really and all the people within Bournemouth and create a thriving community and what we want to say is Bournemouth is the place to be. It certainly is. Well what about the in terms of the ingredients putting you know what you put in the festival what you leave out of it has that been a difficult choice? Yeah so in July we put a shout out to uh, for speakers to say who would like to uh, come and speak at the festival and what would the topics be and yeah we are <laughs> inundated <laughs> with, with uh, requests um, but yeah it's it's I have an advisory board to help me out um, and you know what we try to do is balance what people want so you know as I said um, I've written a couple of books so from the first festival is very much what did I want to know as a, as a new newbie writer. And dare I say, are you one of the speakers? I'm not this year, no. Last year I hosted a panel, but this year, no, I'm running around too much if I'm honest with you. <laughs> like a scalded cat. <laughs> um, but no, uh, yeah, so, you know, trying to get, use the feedback that we had last year and, and think about, you know, all the questions, even the things that you said to me this morning, like, how do you self-publish? How do you find an agent? What are the ingredients to write a book? What about marketing? How do you design a book cover, you know. You um, could write a book about all, all these things, Dominic. That could be your next title, if you hadn't already done it, of course. I, I had thought about that, yes, yeah. but do you know what? I haven't got time. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about, now, in terms of age group, uh, is, is there any a particular age or is it open to everybody? It's open to everybody. We have children's activities. Uh, we On the Saturday in the Avenue, we have a variety of different uh, creative writing workshops for um, children. Mm -hmm. We also have a children's writing competition live right now and that is for all schools in Dorset and home educated children uh, living in Dorset and that is a nature themed uh, writing competition and we actually had uh, Chris Packham um, uh, do a little intro video for us, so that's very exciting. Um, yeah, so it's it's really is for whether you're six years old, sixty or older. Please come along to so the right festival. So there's hope for Mike and, and and for Ian to get further inspiration, and even for myself. <laughs> no, well, I've never I've never taken pen to paper, apart from writing scripts for radio programs, that sort of thing. You know, yeah. Uh, now tell us a wee bit about these competitions because you've been saying you're getting entries from, from all over the world. You mentioned the children's one, but what else is on the go? We actually right now have a poetry and flash fiction competition, and that is open to everybody in the world, um, and that is. Um, we are getting entries from Australia, New Zealand, Dubai, United States, Ireland, Canada, South Africa, I saw yesterday, um, and that has just gone crazy. So what I said before about making Bournemouth the creative hub. Putting of, it on the map. Yeah. Putting it on the map. You know, we really are doing that. So the writing competition um, is open to everybody. It's flash fiction up to 30 words, uh, 30 lines. It's flash fiction up to 400 words. And um, two creative writing lecturers from the Arts University of Bournemouth are judging, um, and it's being published by our local indie publisher, Dithering Chaps. So is that the prize getting it published? Yes, that's right. And um, the prestige of being in our first um, anthology, so of there will course. be a book um, at the end and of it. Which you could can... come on the radio and share their works. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, if you good. let me. <laughs> oh, I think we could let you just... Yeah, the guys are nodding, so <laughs> I think you're passing the thing, you know. Oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah. And just lastly on the competition, um, we're also supporting a local arts um, community um, called Vita Nova, who work with recovering addiction uh, writers. Yeah. So we are supporting them with entries and donations. So it's, you know, what we're trying to create is not just any old competition, trying to add something where we're helping other people. Uh, now, another aspect that people may not think about, but is the general health, well-being... Uh, Writing, getting it out there, what's in, out, on paper, whatever, it's really good for you, isn't it? 
It is really good. And a lot of the networking events that I go to is like a therapy session. And a lot of people say that writing kind of you when you write you have to go into a deep place within yourself mm -hmm. within yourself particularly in memoir writing and you find stories and you dig deep and you kind of uncover lots of sometimes difficult stories or difficult emotions and that comes out on paper so a lot of people you know it, it doesn't matter if you're writing a memoir or a fiction or a thriller or whatever it is the stories come from w within and um you know the number of people that i meet ha who've said you know uh, Writing is a lonely business, and you're sitting behind a laptop, or and, you know it's not a group activity. So you do go deep. You do writing does allow you to find your inner self. And I've met people who um, who used to write, and the, through the festival and its networking activities and its events, have found the courage and confidence to write again. And I've met people who have been suicidal, and I've met people who have abused themselves and have said to me that the writing festival has helped them overcome that and see the light a real life saver it really is yeah. and you know when people are brave enough to tell me that you know it's quite you know the hairs you know go on you know stand up on, the, on my makes skin it, makes it worthwhile it makes it worthwhile and and it's you know i try to make it as inclusive as possible and you know at a launch event we had people from the whole spectrum you know uh, of young old black asian trans and it, it's a safe space because the, the common ground is writing. And if we can create a community, an inclusive and diverse community where people feel safe and feel uh, have the opportunity to express themselves, then I think that's worked. And on Sunday night uh, of the festival, we actually have a showcase of some of those um, arts groups um, that are going to be performing um, their works. So Vita Nova, who I mentioned, but also Word Breakers and Silences, who work with the trans community, um, and the Outsiders Project that work with people sidelined from society, um, and uh, the wonderful Anka Bata, who works with uh, migrants and people of colour. So the Sunday night event is going to be really special because I think it encapsulates everything that the Writing Festival has achieved in the last... 15 months and i suppose that in this world where we're all making value judgments about each other and, and of course minorities do tend to get pushed out don't they this is a wonderful opportunity i guess to to hear the truth from the cat's mouth as it were uh and uh, so it's great to hear that you that, that you're doing that the other thing of course is confidence because so many people very quickly lose their confidence don't they it only takes one person to maybe read something and say well what a load of rubbish you know i'm um, no doubt you've talked to people who've gone through that uh, which, which almost halted them in their creative efforts. And social media is not a nice place for that. No, and, it's, you know, we are yeah, so quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, and we're so addicted to validation, you know, and, you know, even for me on my book on Amazon, you know, I could have a hundred five star reviews, but one one star review. Yeah. And that's the one I focus on. And that goes across life in general, isn't it? And I, I kind of think that we need to start not ignoring it, but be positive, be positive and yeah. think, okay, well, no. you know, I, you, You've been brave enough to put something out in the world, you know. And the way I describe it is, there's some, there's two types of people. There's some people that go out, out on stage and perform, and there's other, and the other people throw tomatoes. And if you're brave enough to put your hand up and to go on stage, then I think that's worth a hundred of those people that are throwing tomatoes. And maybe the people who are throwing those tomatoes are a wee bit jealous <laughs> that but, they haven't done it themselves. Potentially, and you know, I, I think when you go on stage, you're vulnerable, and it, there's bravery and. To, to go on stage and say, look at me, look what I've done. And people go on stage because they feel passionate about something and they say, yes, you know, let's talk about the minority groups that you just mentioned. Look, I've got a story to tell. I've got a voice as well. Hear my side of the story. If you like it, fine. If you don't like it, fine. But you don't need to yeah. criticise or... Yeah be horrible yeah. and, and, and the other thing don't forget that hope fm is a community radio station so if you're preparing for the festival you're listening to all of this and you said oh i i would like to share a little bit well just drop me a line blair c at hopefm.com uh, we'd be delighted to give you time on there this is your radio station and we're certainly here to encourage not to pour damn water on it which is why dominic is here well you've inspired me never mind the listeners you know so how do we find out more and and sign up for all the various 
this event? So all the events, as I said, over 100 events are on the website, bournemouthwritingfestival.co.uk, and we're also on social media. Just Google Bournemouth Writing Festival. Well, Dominic, we wish you every success. And no doubt the second will be the third and the fourth and so, and so on. And it's great, of course, that you're putting Bournemouth on the map and clearly you're pretty good at marketing as well to get to get it out there all over the world <laughs> yeah anyway your final piece of music again very appropriate every day i write the book why this one Again, uh, it's a dedication to the wonderful community that have been so, so supportive to me because uh, I do this on my own and uh, I just want to thank everybody who has been positive and has attended and given me a pat on the back. So this is for you. Thank you. And have a big pat on the back from all of us at Hope FM as well. Thank you so <laughs> Th much. Thanks, Dominic.